Right. Give me just one second. So, um, firstly, I, uh, I just want to say, if any of those words that Martin gave resonate with you at all, don't leave without speaking to somebody. It's very... Um, I feel it's very easy, isn't it, to just think, yeah, well, just, I'm sure somebody else in the room had this or that or the other. But, you know, if God is speaking to you directly, then don't leave today without speaking to somebody because God wants to do a work in your life. God wants to do a change something in your life today. And in a way, that sort of resonates a little bit with what I'm going to talk about. Um, so... Thank you, Martin, for a good introduction there. Okay, let's see if this technology works. So, I'm gonna. I was really struck with um, when we did the, the the Daniel fast about this word, about the word breakthrough, um, and I want this to be uh, more of a conversation amongst friends than a preach. Okay, I don't see myself as a preacher, but I see myself as somebody who wants to share God's word and what God is saying to people. And I want this to be like a reflection and a time just to think, did we see breakthrough? Didn't we see breakthrough? Are we still praying for that breakthrough? Are we still believing for that breakthrough? So um, for those of you who aren't uh, regular members of the church, in January we did a three-week fast when people gave up various different things. It was maybe food or um, TV or social media. I was really impressed with some of the guys in Delta Plus who gave up sugar for three whole weeks. And they, they did, I have to say, parents, wherever you are, they did really, really well. You know, we were having um, fruit for snacks and stuff like that at Delta Plus, but they were strong. They were like, no, this is what we're going to do. Uh, so good for them. They really stuck. They really took that whole thing about giving up something. So we did a three-week fast as a church, something all together that we did. And um, we looked at this with the kids in Delta Plus. Um, so we looked at um, why Daniel prayed. So he prayed, uh, he prayed as a young man for breakthrough, something he was passionate about. That when, you know, people were looking at him and watching him and he was sort of on a pedestal, he prayed for breakthrough. He prayed to see God's kingdom breakthrough. As an old man, he prayed for breakthrough, for the old men among you and the older ladies amongst us. It isn't something just for young people. God doesn't call us to this just for a period in our lives, but as something that we continue through for the whole of our lives. It's a, it's a mindset, it's a heart attitude, rather than just a sort of a fad or a moment. And I think it's really easy for us all, isn't it, to get caught up in, this is what we're doing now, this is the latest trend, this is the latest this, or this is just for young people, or this is just for the older generation, or this is just for parents, or this is just for single parents, uh, single people, or this is just for this, or this is just for that. But God calls us to have this mindset of praying for breakthrough throughout our lives. And the third thing we looked at, actually, with the young people was um, praying persistently, not giving up. Now, Andy and I have started recently having a little prayer book because we, we had several people we were praying for. And um, I, don't, I, I can't remember all the people on what days and what, how we did it. So I said, why don't we start a little prayer journal? And that has revolutionised the way we think about how we pray as a couple because we've been able to like go, oh, yeah, we're praying for this or we're praying for that. And then we see an answer to that prayer and we can physically cross that off the list and see that God has changed that situation. And then you can use that to go back and you think, I thank you, God, for that you changed that. And I thank you, God, that you changed that. And it's just revolutionised our prayer life. So I would really um, encourage you uh, to think about just We just got a little notebook, wrote the days of the week in and started writing some stuff in there. And I'll share a couple more of those testimonies later. So, during the Daniel fast, these are the things that I picked out that we did as a church. Uh, Suze, you put together a lovely, fantastic um, calendar for that three weeks. I don't know, hands up. I found that super, super um, useful because there was stuff on there that happened that I wasn't aware of. And I was like, oh, Andy, what's this? And he's like, oh, I don't know. Or somebody else. Oh, oh, you know, I didn't know that happened. And I didn't know we went in that street and knocked on doors. And I didn't know we did this. 
And it really opened my eyes to so many different things that the church was doing. And, you know, I don't expect that we do all know everything. And, but it's a really, it, that was such a good resource. So thanks very much, Suze, for that. I appreciated it. And I'm sure lots of other people did too. There were times when we prayed together as a whole church in the evenings. Um, and that was really useful. We went out prayer walking. We're going to talk a bit about some of these things later. We prayed for breakthrough. And um, we were confident in seeing the results of our prayers. It wasn't something that we were doing in a sort of light-hearted or a fluffy way. Or because we, you know, someone's, Martin's told us that we've got to do it, so we've got to do it. It's that people really committed to doing it because we wanted to do it. We could see the point of doing it. So, we talked a bit about... Um, the prayer diary and you know like ours is still lying around somewhere at home on on the table on the bedside table and every now and again we get it out and it's like oh yeah let's pray for that road or let's pray for these people here and and it's it just means that it gives us a real direction as to what the church is doing and that praying together now um I found, I found, I only came a couple of times when we all prayed together because, to be honest with you, close your ears, Martin, at seven o'clock at night, once I've had a day at school, I'm done. Yeah? Amen. I can, amen thank you. <laughs> and, and I found, I was like, I, I cannot get up off the sofa at set and come out. But you know what I did instead? I went at eight o'clock, and I were like, TV off, upstairs, prayer, the prayer thing out for the day, and we prayed. So I just thought, that, you know, I'm not saying I got it right, but I'm just saying we took that opportunity to join with others in prayer. And that whole corporate praying together is so strong and so powerful that I think we probably underestimate how powerfully that is when it changes something in, in the heavenlies. So whatever you did, um, there were great opportunities. And we prayed with the kids from Delta. So what we did with them is we went through that prayer diary and we did things like Pictionary Ministry. So we had to, we all had a, uh, you had a little slip and it said kids work and so they had to draw the kids work. Then we had to guess what they were drawing and then we prayed for that ministry. We did Fast the Parcel where, <laughs> that was Sue's one, uh, where we um, put all the different streets that people went, uh, where's Kim? that you go round to, and we put all those streets into the parcel, and they, we played the music, and they unwrapped a layer, and we, we prayed for each of those streets. And we did some stuff like that with the young people. And I felt, you know, again, that was a really um, powerful time. Where's Beth? Do you want to talk about what you did with your home group? Shall I come to you? I feel about bit bad about saying this because um, it wasn't my idea at all. <laughs> like, well, we have a home group that quite a few members um, wanted to meet during the day because getting out in the evening's hard. And so um, that's what we did one Wednesday. We met at a time that worked for most people and we prayed together and then afterwards we went for a prayer walk around the area. Fantastic. That's great. And that was a really nice time just doing something together. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a power in doing something together, isn't there? So, um, prayer walking. So, uh, Beth talked about that they were prayer walking, but I know that there were two prayer walks scheduled into that diary, and um, I didn't go again. <laughs> but I know that Andy went, so Andy's going to come and talk about prayer walking. <laughs> Which you do quite a lot of prayer walking, don't you? I, I do. Um, so uh, there's, there's not a lot in the Bible to tell us to prayer walk. Uh, but when, when, you, when you start from the beginning of the Bible, it, it says that uh, God walked with uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. So there's something about God walking with us. And uh, you read about Noah. Noah walked with God. And before him, Enoch walked with God. And uh, then there was the, the big guy, Abraham. Uh, and in, in chapter 13 of Genesis, uh, God says to, uh, to Abraham, and I did look it up earlier just so I got it right. Ooh. Here we go. 
Verse 17, go walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. Uh, I think the message actually gives it a bit more of a kick. It says, so, on your feet, get moving. Walk through the country, its length and breadth. I'm giving it all to you. And uh, th- there's something about the fact when we, when we get up and we get out and we start to pray uh, and we're walking with God and he says, well, I'm going to give this to you, I'm going to give this to you. And he gives us sort of ideas and, and, and ways in which this can happen. So um, I'll tell you a story. It wasn't to do with the two prayer walks, I'm sorry. The, the one I remember. Um, so I'm praying uh, with one particular person who uh, is, is linked in with Edmonton County School. And one, one week we were praying there. And uh, for some reason we started praying for the governors. So anyway, this, this person went away. And, and looked up the governors and realised the school hadn't got many. Uh, so she sent an email to the, uh, the CEO of the school and said, uh, um, do you need any governors? Within minutes, she got a reply. Yeah, yeah send, your, send, your, send your CV in. So she waited for two days, not wanting to appear too keen, <laughs> and, uh, and sort of sent it in. And then a couple of days after that, she got a yes, please, uh, you're now on the governors of the school. And, and, and this sort of just came out of prayer walking. God bringing something up, putting it on, on somebody's heart, them acting on it, uh, and, and then God sort of doing that. And if you, if you want to influence the school where your kids go, become a governor of the school. Uh, and, and now she, she's got, she's, she can get access to the school at any time. She's got a badge, governor. And she can walk into the school. And she can pray or walk around the school. She can go into any class. She can do anything in the school. She's got amazing access into, into that place now to have an influence in there. And uh, that all came out of prayer walking. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so uh, uh, my, I, my plan for this morning is to encourage you and to get us back in that position where we, we're almost like living that Daniel fast weekly because we want to see God do these things uh, around us um, and that takes me on to my next point which is you know we prayed for breakthrough now a uh, quick quick personal testimony here um, to share with you Josh got made uh, our eldest son got made redundant way back in October and he was looking he's an archaeologist by uh, training looking for a job in archaeology he thought you know this is you know I can get a job and he tried and he tried and he couldn't find anything and um, just as the Daniel he gone for a job um, as a court clerk and just as the um, Daniel Fast started he was like oh, I've been offered the job and we were like God you've got to get this because his money his redundancy was running out and you know it was getting to that crucial point and we said God you've got to do something about this and we want to see this changed in this period in this three weeks and within that three weeks he got his contract through and he got his start day and he actually started on what was it the last monday of the fast he started so within that really within two weeks all that paperwork came through and it just it was just an amazing thing and you know what had seemed like it was going because you know this is is, you know the ministry of justice they're not quite that quick and, and, you know, or I've got to have this bit of paperwork done and then this has to be done and it has to go through this department and then this de- So this is going to take like six months. And it took two weeks. You know, God just did an amazing thing. And, um, you know, he's now a Crown Court clerk. I will tell you where later. But he's getting to see some life in a slightly different perspective. But God changes things when we pray for breakthrough when we believe that that breakthrough is going to happen then god will change things and sometimes that's us having to believe that that breakthrough is going to happen it's not because i want this to change i want this to change god then he changed this and then you come over here well it's most just you know i'll leave that over there i don't believe god's going to do it i'm just going to ask him to do it because if you ask god to do something expect it to happen and uh We're going to have a story, a testimony in a moment about how God changes things. Perhaps not how that person expected it to happen, but God changed something. Uh, So, Becca, would you like to come and share a little bit of your story uh, with us? Um, 
just made a few notes. <clears throat> uh, so back in September, um, I'm a primary school teacher. Um, I changed year groups and I'd had a long six week summer and I was, I, I was looking forward to changing year groups. But as I went back to school, um, I really struggled. Um, I was really overwhelmed. I was, um, I was crying every single week. I would get through to Friday and then I would be dreading Monday. Um, and I was just, I was asking God to change the situation that I was in um, because it was affecting my health. I wasn't sleeping very well. I was, um, I was getting really lightheaded. I was getting headaches and all of this. And I was almost, I was asking God for change, but I was trying to force my own way better. Um, and I kept asking God, can I leave? Can I leave this school? And he was going, no, you need to stay here. Um, and you're going through this for a reason. But it was the worst, the worst feeling I've ever had because I was having these thoughts that just, I was going, God, why, why? Um, but I was, getting thing, I was getting through day to day. Um, and then the Christmas break came. And for the last year and a half, I've been doing KLM, which is Kingdom Living Ministries, which is a course all about hearing from God. And in January, we had a weekend away um, where it, it was about encountering the Father's heart. And at this time when um, I went away, I knew I had to go there, even though in the moment I thought, this is the last thing I want. I'm starting school on Monday. Why do I want to be tired starting school on Monday? But things changed in an instant. I had to really give everything over to God. In that weekend, I realized that I'd been trying to control this situation and I'd been, I'd been wanting the power. It was, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna do what you're saying. I'm gonna just do what I want. Um, and there was a bit of unbelief in me about that God could, God could, God could get me out of it. Um, and I had to also accept that I was making my life harder by not letting God have the control and letting him have the voice. But God changed things in, a, in an instant. As I drove home from that weekend, the following morning, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning and, and said to myself, I'm going to spend an hour with God before I go to school. And if you know me, I do not get up early. <laughs> I will, I will, I'm the person who will have five alarms, six, ten past six, quarter past six, half past six, seven o'clock. Can I push it even more? Ten past seven. Okay, out of the door at quarter past seven, but that's fine. Um, and I got up at six o'clock in the morning and I was spending time with God. I was giving it all over to him and God has stirred a passion in me. He has given me peace and the situation has not changed, but God has changed me. He's changed how I see it. Um, and um, I... I'm not, I'm not breaking down, I'm not getting anxious. And there's people in school who are like, Rebecca, why are you always smiling? Um, and at the start of that weekend, I had a broken heart. At the end of the weekend, I had a joy-filled heart. Um, and I'm already starting to see the reasons why I'm in this school. And I've had breakthrough with members of staff who've randomly asked me questions. Rebecca, do you go to church every single week? It's like, yes, I do. It's like, and I, one of the other teachers, they said, why are you always so joyful? Why do you always have a smile on your face? Um, and if I wasn't in this school, then there's also contacts which wouldn't have been made. Um, and so God has changed my heart. He's 
there's absolutely been breakthrough and yeah god can do it for you as well thanks becca <laughs> I, it's it's not easy coming up here and being vulnerable like that so becca i really appreciate that and thank you for um offering or, or saying you'd come i appreciate it and it's amazing isn't it that you know all around that time um when the daniel fast was happening this was this is sort of you it sort of started to begin and started to change and again you saw a massive you know massive breakthrough as you committed that time and we start to see our results to our prayers results to the cries of our hearts Scrites to the, the cries of our souls. And you know what? What really struck me with what Becca said is that the situation hasn't changed, but her heart and her mindset is what's changed. And you know what? We want to see God break through in so many different ways. And we want Him to change that situation. But sometimes it's us He needs to change. It's us who need to be open to Him and have our hearts open and say, God, you know, this isn't perhaps going to change, but change how I see it, change how I deal with it, change how my interactions are with people. And when we do that, we start to see uh, a change in, in the situations around us. So that's really my reflections on, on the Daniel fast, what I got out of that and how I saw situations change. And I hope for each one of us, we can have a little bit of saying, yeah, Amen. I saw this happen and I saw that happen. And, you know, have those conversations with people because we, you know, each one of us need to be encouraged by the stories of the other. You know, I'm a great believer in that story is important, but we need to be sharing that with each other. Um, you know, I have been having a conversation with a friend at church about a situation and they've really encouraged me uh, in how they've seen it, a situation. And I hope that I've encouraged them as well. Uh, in how they've seen the situation. And that we, unless we have those conversations, we sort of become islands. And we don't want to be islands. We want to be a, a big group of people together who are moving in the direction that God is taking us. Um, so, uh, just moving on a little bit and thinking about prayer. Um, you all know this. This is such a well-known verse, isn't it? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, uh, will give him a snake? For, even, for if you, even though you're evil, know how to give good, give, good, uh, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What a powerful voice for those of us who seek and ask that we will find. How much more will God give to us if, we've, if we're obedient to his words? How much more will he give to us if we ask? You can't do that unless you're in a relationship with Jesus. You know, um, those of us who are parents or have grandkids or nieces and nephews, unless you're in a relationship with them and unless you have that trust going when you ask them something. Now, I work in a school. There's quite a few of us in here that work in a school. And, and we realise that when you're working with kids, you need to build that relationship up. Well, actually, when you're working with anyone, unless you've got that relationship with somebody, you can ask them all the things in the world. We need to have that relationship. But the relationship we have with our Father God is so much better, so much deeper, because he wants to give us things. He wants to bless us. He wants us to honour him and to share with him. We, when we ask, we communicate our wishes. We say, Father God, I want to see you change this situation. I want to see you move here. I want to see you speak to this person. And we have to be patient. We come to God. And if you um, remember Becca's story, you know, this for her, this, this situation started in September. And she kept coming to God, and she kept coming to God, and she kept being patient. She kept saying, God, I want you to change this. It wasn't like I'm stamping my foot like a, I'm having a tantrum here, but I'm patient. I'm waiting for you, Lord Jesus. I'm waiting for you to change this situation. 
when we seek, when we seek him out. It's the attitude of our heart and of our mind. Our, mi our mindsets in this modern world are very, can be very strong, but we need a mindset which is godly. We need a mindset which is moving towards what God wants rather than what the world is telling us. And we need to be looking for a solution or a change in a situation. And as you know, I'm going to go back to Becca's testimony again because it was so powerful that the solution wasn't the situation to change, it was her that had to change. You know, and that's so powerful that 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 change in itself has then also brought about other changes. But we need to be always looking, always seeking for things to change, to be more like God. God, what God wants. And we need to be persistent. We need to keep knocking sometimes. We need to keep asking for questions. We, keep, we can't just um, ask once. We need to come back because we have a father that wants to be in that relationship with us and he wants to hear from us. Um, another little testimony of friends of ours. Um, he, this somebody from Lebanon. He um, is Syrian, living in Lebanon. So that's a very difficult situation to get his... Uh, residency card he got married to um, a lady from philippines and then she wanted to go and join him in the lebanon so it's this a non-lebanese person trying to bring another non-lebanese person into lebanon okay if you i can't explain how complicated that is if any of you have had to deal with visas for other countries yeah some of you are nodding going yeah we've i've got it you don't need to keep saying anymore it's 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 complex and so we um, had them on our little prayer book and we were like, because it was a nigh on, in human terms, it was an impossible situation. It wasn't going to happen. And was it about three months? Maybe about three or four months. Every once a week, a couple of times a week, we would pray for them, pray for this situation, pray for God to change. And they've got a visa. She's been living in Lebanon for about three or four months together as husband and wife as they wanted but you know what if you look to that in in human terms god just moved something and changed something but it was persistent persistence in people praying but also like we sometimes have to move ourselves as well and position ourselves in a different way so it's not giving up and and just keep going and really that's what i want to uh, my heart I think for today was to talk about breakthrough so what were you praying about in January what were the things that are that during the Daniel fast you were like yeah I want to see breakthrough in this and I want to see breakthrough in that what were those things have you seen a breakthrough or have you gone oh yeah that was January and now we're in March and we're moving forward you know um so one thing we did with the at Delta is we did these little prayer cards Okay, so we were doing Daniel at the time. And so we, what we did with the kids is we put, what change do you want to see this week, this month, and this year? And we got the kids to write that down and say, you know, don't, don't give up on what you're praying for. If you really believe you want God to see a change in this situation, this, this week, this month, this year, keep praying, keep pushing in, keep asking God. And ask those around you, I'm praying for this. You know, can you join me? Will you join me? Will you join me? And, and getting people to pray with you and just keep going. And I've got some of these printed out. So if you think, actually, that's a really good idea and I want something that I can put in my notebook or my diary, if people have diaries these days. Do people have diaries these days? Okay, uh, put it in your diary and keep it and think, I can come back to that and I can be reminded of that. And, um, you know, it's something that is, is sometimes we need something visual. Otherwise, the things that we're praying for, or the things we're thinking about, sort of in our busy lives, sort of fall off the end. So um, if you want one of those, those are there for you. I know that I found it really useful tool, and I know that some of the young people did as well. And finally, we should be anticipating that God will um, come. God will change the situations that we're asking him to change. God will meet us in the situations where we are struggling, in the things that we're finding hard. God will meet us. God will come. God will make a change. 
even if it's um, not necessarily the way we expected. We want one thing, and God changes it another way. But God will come. And I love this picture of this, this kid waiting, looking, not giving up, but, but pushing forward, waiting for that answer to come. And um, my encouragement to you is don't give up. Keep praying. Keep seeking that breakthrough in those situations, knowing that our Father God will give us so much more than we ever dreamed or imagined. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that when we come to you in prayer, you hear us. We don't have to put on a fancy voice or a fancy attitude, but Lord, you just come and you just hear us. And so, Lord, now we say, don't forget our prayers, Lord Jesus. Help us to see a breakthrough in some situations that are troubling us. Help us, Lord, to keep reaching out to you, knowing, Lord, that you will give us more than we could have uh, dreamed or imagined. Lord, you will give us more than we think you're going to. And, Lord, that you will change us in the process, Lord Jesus. May we see breakthrough in our lives, in the lives of our families, of our neighbourhoods, of those situ and may you change situations which seem impossible to change. Lord Jesus, we cry out to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.